What's up guys, welcome back to part 10 and the last part of the how to make a VR game series. As always, if you would like to support our channel so we can bring you better and more content, please consider subscribing to the channel or supporting us on Patreon where you can get access to our full source codes. In the last episode we showed you how to interact with a UI button by just using the tip of your virtual finger for easier usage in VR. In this last video we are going to package everything we have created in this series into an Android package or APK for short, so that we can easily share with our friends and install the app on our Oculus or MetaQuest. Let's jump right into Unity. First we want to open our build settings and then we want to switch our platform to Android. If you haven't installed Android, please watch the second video of this series where we explain you how to install all the modules you need. Click on Android and then switch platform. Depending on the size of your project, this can take some minutes. Next, we change the texture compression to ASTC. ASTC stands for Adaptive Scalable Texture Compression. ASTC is designed to have different block sizes and to effectively obsolete all prior compressed formats by providing all the features of the others all in one format. Now we see we have some kind of incompatibility between the color space and the current settings. Let's go to player settings. First, let's change our company name and then the name of our product. Then we want to set the color space to linear and not gamma, since it will give us much better results at minimally more performance. For the graphics API, we're going to use OpenGLE S3, so you can delete the two. This will solve our warnings that we had before. We go down and then we want to check multi-threaded rendering, static batching, as well as compute skinning. Set the texture compression format here to ASTC as well. Next we go down to the identification and here you can see that we don't have a name. The name usually consists of our company name and the product name. We can just uncheck and check again and it will automatically fill in our new name that we typed in before. Here set the minimum API level to around 24 and we want to have automatic checked here so we always install it on the highest available Android version. Next, for the scripting backend, we want to change Mono to IL2CPP. The code generation is heavily improved on IL2CPP and your code size and performance can be improved as well. You see here that we have a warning. We have to choose ARM64 and can uncheck ARM v7. Next, we check our quality settings. Here, make sure that we choose Balanced. Set Balanced as the default for our Android platform. Then, turn off vSync. This basically means we are not waiting for Unity to make vertical syncs, which would potentially drop our frame rate significantly on VR headsets. Lastly, set the texture quality to half resolution at maximum. Now we can go on to the graphics and set the balanced settings here as well. Go here and choose balanced. Perfect. Click on the settings and Unity will show us where it's saved. We can close the window and go to our URP settings. What we want to do here is to remove everything that could cause our VR headset to have problems or take too much performance. For example, if you want to save performance, you could uncheck the post-processing. However, because our scene is still very light, we are going to keep the post-processing, since as you can see now, it will turn off the glow of our targets and we don't want that. If you are experiencing performance issues, you can turn this off, of course, but we are going to check it for now since it looks way better. 
However, we can just remove the SSAO. Then, let's continue to our light and shadow settings of the balanced URP settings. Shadows are in general very heavy, so we want to keep them as low as possible or even remove them. Also here we will uncheck unnecessarily expensive calculations, so just uncheck terrain holes. If we uncheck HDR, we will see that the glow is disappearing again. So it's your decision if you want to keep it on or not. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. Anti-aliasing is very important for VR headsets. We are going to set it on 4 times. Anti-aliasing is necessary because you might know, in game, edges and lines can appear jittery. This is caused by two meshes not having a clear difference in form and color to each other or just being too much for the VR headset to handle. This setting will improve the visual fidelity of our game a lot. In the shadow settings we can see a cascade count. This will allow us to show the shadows in different qualities depending on how far away we are from them. However, leave this on one for VR since this can be computationally expensive as well. The last thing to do here is to uncheck soft shadows. Shadows are very expensive as I said in general and you should avoid it wherever you can. Finally, in the XR plugin management we check if we set up our XR plugin correctly. Go to project settings and then we go down to XR plugin management. We want to set the provider on OpenXR. When we click on OpenXR, we make sure that the render mode is set on single pass instanced. We also make sure that we at least added the interaction profiles for the Oculus Touch controller and that we check Oculus Quest support here. And now we are ready to build. So let's go back to the build settings. And you can see that there are two ways to build your APK. First, make sure that your scene is added to the build settings. You can do that by just pressing on add open scenes. Then one way to build is build and run. For that you need to connect your device to the PC Go up here, click on refresh, and then you can see your Oculus Quest device. Choose your device and just press on build and run, and your APK will be automatically installed on your glasses and will be played automatically. So all you have to do is just set your headset on your head and play. However, I want to show you how you can have a little bit more control over your install process. We are going to click on build and we will have an APK that we can then manually install on our developer hub. If you don't know what the developer hub is, please watch the second video of this series where we show you how to install it and activate your developer mode. So let's click on build and save it. The first time you build, it can take around 5 to 10 minutes. Don't worry, this will only take that long the first time you compile your app. Right, perfect guys. We build our application without any errors and we are ready to install it now on our developer hub. So go ahead, plug in your headset and start up the developer hub. Go up to device manager and here you can just drag and drop your APK. Now, if it's finished, you could technically launch your app directly from the developer hub and all you have to do is just put your headset on your head. However, this wouldn't be a tutorial channel if I wouldn't show you more tips and tricks. So let me show you where to find your application inside of your headset. Alright guys, we are in our meta menu right now. We go to apps and then up here under all we go to unknown sources and here we can see our VR basics tutorials. So let's start that. We can now try if everything works. We can still grab our cubes.
in our holster. Great. And that's it for this series guys. You now know everything you need to know to get started with your own VR developer career. We have been working very hard to bring you this series guys, so we would very much appreciate a like or subscribe. If you would like to get the source code of this whole project, feel free to join us as a Patreon. If you have any questions, you can reach us anytime through our Discord channel and we are happy to answer you any questions about XR anytime. Definitely stay tuned for our next video series and I hope to see you next time.